Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over an upcoming very cold pattern for much of the eastern, central, and even parts of the western United States. We're going to be going over where that cold air might take place and also how cold those temperatures may be. And we're going to be taking a look at a couple of the longer term indices as to how cold those temperatures may be. And also we're going to take a look at the end of the video as to when that drier period of, uh, of storms may actually let up and when we might actually get into more of an active per period of uh, storminess. So here's what the current National Weather Service page looks like. We have some winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings uh, in parts of the south central states. Uh, winter storm warnings in the pinks, winter weather advisories in the purples there. We also have some air quality alerts in effect, or actually those are dense fog advisories in effect for parts of the northern plains as well as in two parts of California there uh, where you are dealing with a bit of fog issues. Uh, but other than that, there's not a lot going on in terms of watches and warnings for much of the country. It's actually a quite dry day, except for if you live in the south central United States where you are dealing with that winter storm. Uh, but other than that, if you looked at the radar, you wouldn't see much, uh, much storminess except for this winter storm down there and also if you want to see my forecast for that winter storm you can go check out yesterday's video so Here's what the current polar vortex looks like, uh, and I'm using the GFS 10 millibar height anomalies. And for those of you who haven't seen one of my uh, videos that kind of talk about the longer range pattern, I usually show this because I think it's more of an accurate uh, signal in terms, of, uh, and instead of using one of those temperature anomaly maps at the surface, because those are so uh, so up to change, they can change so quickly uh, just because it's it's uh, all determined by individual storms that might not even be there as you get to as you get closer to that event it's all based on little pattern changes that you don't even know are going to happen uh, and most of the time that doesn't even verify so when you look at a upper part of the atmosphere when you go higher up in the atmosphere that's when you get a more accurate look at what may happen and the gfs 10 millibar height 10 millibars is right around 95 to 110,000 feet up in the atmosphere so of course you can't uh, can't take exactly what's happening here and translate that down to the surface you have to wait about 10 to 14 days for that to occur uh, just because of how high up it is so for example this is for today's uh, polar vortex and what it looks like this is January 10th so if you were to add 10 to 14 days that's uh, January 20th to 24th when you could expect it somewhat on the surface to look like this and of course it's not going to look exactly like this but you can tell where the general areas of troughing will be where the general areas of ridging will be uh, and that's definitely something that's very important and that can definitely help you uh, determine Determine the overall uh, pattern of the atmosphere and something to just also take a note of when you get into those oranges or reds that's where you're looking at an area of warmer temperatures or ridging in the upper parts of the atmosphere so we see an, a decent area of ridging over Alaska and then we see troughing and that polar vortex in that blue uh, which we see over Greenland Iceland and then back through into parts of Scandinavia there and into Europe and uh, Asia there so uh, let's play this through and we're gonna go day by day for the next about 15 uh, to 16 days and then here to be by January 11th we're dealing with that polar vortex migrating further into Europe uh, and Asia but we will start to see our first signs of a split around the 14th now we have seen a split before uh, this winter and we've already seen one I believe earlier in January uh, so we already see we already saw a polar vortex split although like this one that you're seeing on this model run it will be short-lived uh, and it will probably go back into one bigger polar vortex we had one before that was only about two to three days long, uh, and it stayed up in the Arctic area. So you would you didn't really feel too many effects if you lived in these in southern Canada or in the United States. We had uh, those colder. Uh, we had that polar vortex down near Greenland, and then we also have another one near central Russia. And I think one of the reasons that's happening is because look at all this warmer air that we see both near Africa and also the Mediterranean Sea, and then another area near eastern Russia, and that's why we're dealing with that polar vortex split all this warm air is displacing this polar vortex we also have that ridge near uh, Alaska so this warmer air is kind of confining this colder air into either the United States or into uh, Europe and Asia uh, so the for example the uh, the colder air or the polar vortex really doesn't want to have to deal with going trying to go eastward uh, into parts of the Mediterranean Sea where it already has ridging why would it do that when there's an area that doesn't have ridging and it can go through the 
the path of least resistance and right now that would be Europe or North America there so those are the two options that this polar vortex has instead of going into the ridging it's going to go into the area of semi troughing or uh, more of an active area with less ridging going on now here would be the uh, by the 15th here would be by the 16th here's the 17th and you're starting to see they're migrating towards each other and they might actually converge again by about the 18th of january and we're looking at an area of polar vortex over uh northern russia and into western russia as well where you are dealing with those colder temperatures look at this very warm air over uh over uh parts of russia mongolia into china and then back through into parts of europe there that's really Really, what's going to bring this polar vortex either closer to Greenland or maybe even making a trip into the United States. So as we play this through, you continue to see that by the 19th, here's by the uh, 20th, here's by the 21st, and we're looking at uh, an area of very warm air over parts of um, much of uh, Europe there except for extreme northern Europe there where you're not dealing with as much uh, as much uh, bridging and then you continue to see that this polar vortex kind of just stalls out here to be by the 23rd here's by the 24th here's by the 25th here's by the 26th so it's just stalling there and near the end of the uh, time period here the forecast period we might actually go into somewhat of a positive AO which is the Arctic Oscillation and basically what that means is that that polar vortex might just stay up here into uh, the Arctic Circle and just kind of stay there for a while uh, and not make too many trips down although it is so weak already that it would be very very interesting and very very rare that it would stay here for the rest of the winter you are going to get another one or two or maybe even three trips down from the Arctic uh, Arctic region where you get a little bit of cold air to spill in uh, and we have uh, more of that colder air not centered over Europe by this point but look at where your colder air is centered where, where those darker blues are northern Canada Greenland Iceland and that region so that doesn't have to move too far south in order to get into uh, the United States and we also don't have too much ridging or any ridging at all so there isn't really much of a warm uh, warm uh, there isn't much warmer air to really work with over the United States it's going to be mostly either near normal or uh, below normal for the rest of the month now here would be what the uh, European ensemble model is showing for the Arctic oscillation this goes out 46 days but it is a combination of 50 members so an average of them all uh, and you continue to see that we're near three standard deviations below normal or below the neutral line right now it does pop up uh, near neutral and then it goes back down and then eventually it heads closer to that neutral line although you don't see it go too far positive uh, and I think that's more of an indication that these models think it's going to stay more near the Arctic Circle although you might still have a couple trips down from the Arctic Circle uh, so if you like cold and snow this isn't really the worst pattern to be in you do have a lot of cold air that's uh, up in northern Canada and Greenland and it can easily be accessed by just one storm uh, one powerful storm that drowns down a bunch of cold air and then leaves it over the United States and we've seen that before uh, already this winter now here would be what the European uh, or this is what the uh, East Pacific oscillation is showing and this is the EPO and we're looking at uh, currently it's near three standard deviations above the neutral line but it does pop down near the neutral line goes back positive quite a, by quite a bit and then it just stays near the neutral line before popping back near about one or two standard deviations above the neutral line you want this to be negative for both the uh, uh, the western United States and the eastern United States so even though it is uh, only one or two standard deviations uh, above uh, the neutral line that's not going to be the biggest deal you're really more worried uh, if you like cold and snow if it's near uh, two, uh, three to five degrees above the uh, neutral line or three to five standard deviation deviations above the neutral line because that is when you get into a much more uh, much worse pattern over the Pacific for some colder and snowier conditions to be present so you really want this to stay within about two standard deviations of the neutral line in order to get a decent pattern and it is definitely going to stay there uh, so you're not dealing with too bad of a Pacific and it's definitely much better than what we were dealing with even earlier in the winter 
appear to be what the NAO is showing, the North Atlantic Oscillation, uh, and we're looking at this currently very negative, and then it will go back closer to neutral, but it should stay uh, negative, or maybe it even pops up on the other side of neutral, so uh, it might pop up near, uh, near the positive area, but again, it's still not that big of a deal since it will most likely stay closer to the neutral line, or it might even be a couple standard de deviations below um, below normal. And then here would be what the uh, PNA is showing, the Pacific North America Index. And I know a lot of people think that this is the end of the world if this goes negative, especially if you live in the eastern U.S. It's really not because the pattern that we're in, if you actually look at what the pattern over the western U.S. is, it's colder than normal, although you are also seeing that colder than normal temperatures spread eastward. So it's not one of those patterns where you have ridging over the east. You have no ridging over the east. You just have colder temperatures. So it, the colder temperatures are going to make its way through much of the country. Uh, just because you have a negative PNA does not mean it's inherently warmer over the east. And this is going to be one of those rare, rarer uh, patterns where it's going to be actually a negative PNA, but it's also going to be colder over the east as well. Usually, the negative PNA indicates that you're going to have a colder than normal, uh, colder than normal temperatures over the west, but not the east. Uh, and you can see is you can see how it stays within one or two standard deviations of neutral, uh, and that isn't really the end of the world if you do like cold and snow. So we're in a decent pattern. We're not in the worst pattern, and it's nowhere like last year where we were uh, in a very positive. We were in a very negative PNA with a horrible Pacific, if you like, snow and cold over the eastern United States, and we definitely don't have a very positive AO, and that's one of the reasons that last winter was so warm. So this is definitely nothing like last winter, and I do think you're going to see a couple more snow chances over the near future. And here's why. Now, this is the 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook from the Climate Prediction Center, the CPC. Uh, and this is from the 15th through the 19th. They're, do, they're looking at potentially some uh, more active conditions over the northern United States, maybe some drier conditions over the western and southern states, but it will lead to potentially a more active pattern. We've been very, very dry over much of the country, uh, especially if you live in the northern half of the country where it's been very, very dry uh, over the past few days. Uh, so so I do think that'll kind of change, and I do think you will go into more of an active pattern with a couple more storms. And then here's that 8 to 14 day outlook, and that even spreads further south where we're dealing with a general area of uh, some uh, more uh, precipitation, uh, and this would be from the 17th through the 23rd, the 8 to 14 day outlook. Uh, and even though it's a lower chance, it's only 33 to about 50% chance of that occurring, it is still a decent chance, and this is the first time that we've been in that above normal category for a lot of these areas uh, in a couple weeks. So. Uh, that is a good sign if you do like a more active pattern or a colder and snowier pattern uh, that you are seeing more precipitation. That would mean that even though you have those colder temperatures, it's not suppressing these storms and they will still be, uh, there will still be a couple of storm chances over much of the northern and eastern United States. So, that is going to wrap it up for the uh, video. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, and turning on notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.